Okay. okay. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for coming. Welcome to CSIS. We are honored to have with us today. Yes, English. Uh, so I guess you don't have to translate. Okay. Okay. Right. So what do I do? Uh, Moldova. Very, I'm going to be very brief. I could say much more, but Moldova is a country, I believe, in the heart of Europe uh, that does not receive sufficient attention in Washington. Uh, but hopefully, this will now be rectified when you hear what we have to say today. Since gaining independence from the Soviet Union almost 20 years ago. Moldova has struggled with its territorial integrity, its political stability, and not least, uh, its economic development. It is a country that is currently on the eastern border of both the European Union and of NATO, but one which hopefully will move closer to both organizations over the coming decade. And indeed, our speaker today is committed to the process of European integration, EU integration, as well as a closer relationship with the United States. So let me introduce him very briefly. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, Vlad Filat, following the 2005 parliamentary elections, became a member of the Moldovan parliament. And in March 2009, he, was, he became vice president of the Parliamentary Commission for Security, Public Order and Defense. After the July 2009 parliamentary elections, he signed a coalition agreement with four other parties to create the Alliance for European Integration. Towards the end of August 2009, he became the candidate of the Alliance for the post of Prime Minister. And on September the 17th, 2009, Parliament approved the new government with Vlad as the new Prime Minister. Belated congratulations and welcome to Washington. Um, we are also happy to have with us today, before I hand over the podium to the Prime Minister, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Moldova, the Minister of Economy, uh, the Ambassador of the Republic of Moldova, as well as the US Ambassador to Moldova. So we have quite a good crew here with us today. And before uh, the Prime Minister speaks, let me hand the podium over to Daniel Johannes, Daniel is the CEO of the Millennium Challenge Corporation. For those of you who don't know, I'm sure he was going to give us a little bit more detail. In brief, it's a, U a U.S. government agency created by Congress uh, in January 2004 uh, to reduce poverty through sustainable economic growth. And Moldova became officially eligible for MCC assistance a few years ago. And Daniel is here to make an, an announcement about the new MCC compact with Moldova. Uh, and he will again introduce the Prime Minister. So the Prime Minister is going to get two introductions for the price of one. So that's. I will stop then, hand over to Daniel. <laughs> Prime Minister Filat. It's a pleasure to be here with you, uh, along with Foreign Minister Lianka and the members of the Moldovan delegation. And many thanks to CSIS for hosting us here today. We will gather at the State Department tomorrow to sign a 262 million compact between Moldova and the Millennium Channel Corporation. This is a milestone program to reduce poverty by investing in agriculture and transportation. It is an agreement between the United States and Moldova. It is an agreement by and for the people of Moldova to create opportunities for growth and prosperity. We are excited to sign the Moldova MCC Compact, yet the real proof of the compact's success depends on what happened after it is signed. Our sights must be set on implementing the compact and preparing for the future. Let me share a few thoughts on this. Looking ahead, the compact's success requires full and transparent implementation. It requires the hard work to translate the promise of the compact into action that matter to the people of Moldova. Successful implementation builds on three key factors. 
first, sound policies matter. Moldova qualified for their MCC grant in the first place because of policies they pursued to further good governance, fight corruption, expand economic freedom, and invest in health and education. A commitment like this must continue now with the same determination. MCC is performance-based model for awarding development assistance. We cannot ignore or set aside what we know for sure. Growth flourishes when good policies take root. And a policy climate that fosters growth must continue as Moldova moves forward with implementing its MCC compact. Second, country leadership matters. <coughs> Moldovans work together to develop their compact. They must do the same to implement it. Civil society, the donor community, including our friends at USAID, and the private sector played a key role in defining the compact's agricultural and transport projects. Now, their ongoing engagement is necessary for implementing these projects. MCC does not do the work for partner countries, nor tell them in which sectors to invest. Rather, our partners build their own capacity to lead their own development efforts. This will deliver the results and build the sustainability Moldovans are expecting. And this will also prove to American taxpayers that our investment in Moldova is well placed. And third, the private sector matters. Rehabilitating irrigation systems, helping farmers diversify into high-value agriculture, and building modern and safe roads to markets create new opportunities for the private sector. I invite entrepreneurs, producers, agriculture service providers, and farming enterprises to explore how their businesses can benefit from the compact. Removing obstacles and creating incentive for the private sector can and should happen alongside our efforts to move more Moldovans above the poverty line. Policies that mean growth, leadership that build homegrown capacity, and opportunities that engage the private sector will contribute to the success of Moldova's MCC Compact. We must continue to work together to realize success in Moldova as partners for opportunity. We must deliver results that will mean, that will improve the lives of Moldova's poor and that will open new opportunities for innovation, growth, and investment. This will increase the standard of living for Moldovans today and well into the future. This is what Moldovans want. This is what our partnership through Moldova's MCC Compact must deliver. We at MCC are committed to this course and we welcome working closely with all of you who share the same commitment. With those comments, it is now my privilege and honor to introduce and yield the podium to His Excellency Vladimir Filat, the Prime Minister of Moldova. Mr. Prime Minister, welcome again. All right. Mr. Executive Director of the Millennium Challenge Corporation, Mr. Director of the CSIS, ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege and the happy occasion to express in the name of the government of Moldova and my own sincere gratitude to the government of the United States and the MCC Corporation for accepting the Republic of Moldova as a beneficiary of the full assistance compact program. Also, I would like to thank the CSIS for hosting and organizing this 
important event which is part of this action aimed at strengthening democracy and development, sustainable development of the Republic of Moldova. The United States are a valuable and trustful partner for the Republic of Moldova, and we hope to aim on a new channel, our relationship between our countries, which is based on shared democratic values, mutually beneficial cooperation in the areas of security, economy, culture, and science. In the program of activity of the government of Moldova, which is titled the European Integration, Liberty, Democracy, and uh, Welfare for 2009-2013, our relationship with the United States uh, are among the priority objectives of the foreign policy of our country. The government has undertaken a series of measures aimed at attenuating the consequences of the economic financial crisis, democ democratizing the society and sustainable development of our country. What is important here is to um, underline the fact that the Moldovan society, after eight years of communist government, has passed the test of democracy. It is about the right to vote freely and to elect their own destiny. The last parliamentary elections in Moldova were not about different um, approaches about the future, but more it was a fight between the past and the future. I know that most of those present here have understood clearly the difference and have supported democratic value in my country. I would like to use this opportunity to thank you for your support. But the forces of the old regime have obstructed from the very beginning the activity of the coalition and the government. There wasn't a transfer, a civilized transfer of power. The budget was emptied deliberately. There was, were attempts to divide the There were a number of attempts to divide the society. The refusal to elect the president in order to provoke elections was the last step in this logic of confrontation. We cannot allow that this vicious circle of political games and elections um, continue endlessly if we do not approach with ability and responsibility. This uh, inheritance of the past could compromise the European dream of the new generation and diminish the chances of this to have a decent life in a normal European state. After this challenge, internal challenge for Moldova in 2010, we'll have to implement reforms and key, uh, in key areas of uh, democratic development of the countries, in particular in the political sphere, in order to overcome the instability that was caused by the um, uh, the deficiencies of the legislation. Another challenge, major challenge in 2010 will be to overcome the financial economic crisis and to reset the Moldovan economy for the future. In order to achieve uh, in both these objectives, the economic and political support continues on behalf of the United States, European Union and other relevant partners will be essential. The road to democracy is never easy. We have to do this, though, um, uh, um, decisively and with uh, confidence, and to have next to us our friends and partners. Please allow me to specify this. Uh, friends cannot uh, do uh, more than they can do for us if we did not make the right choice and did not adopt the strategic, the correct strategic decision. The people of the Republic of Moldova has made its historical choice. It decided that democracy and integration to be the basis of stability, security, and economic prosperity of Moldova. Although that through its history, culture, and identity, uh, uh, the Republic of Moldova is an European uh, country, regretfully, it remains by far outside Europe, as it is defined by the frontiers of the European Union and implicitly outside the stability zone, the zone of stability, security, and Euro-Atlantic prosperity. The lack of European perspective is therefore the biggest challenge and the vulnerable 
uh, point for the Republic of Moldova and will stay that way in the years to come if the situation does not change. To be more clear, if we are left to believe that uh, because of these geopolitical uh, challenges, because of the con Transnistrian unsolved con Transnistrian conflict, or because we are very poor, will not offer um, a future perspective for us. The hopes for the new generation of Moldovans will be seriously shattered. Um, and um, uh, the carpet will be pulled from underneath the, uh, the feet of the reformers or pro-European parties. These will have to um, undergo uh, um, authoritarian, uh, uh, the pressures on behalf of authoritarian forces, extremist forces, or uh, extreme left uh, um, uh, forces. These forces will uh, capitalize from the social cost of reforms, uh, liberal policies, NATO uh, threats, and Ox Western imperialism. One of the consequences of this uh, deviation from the European dream at home will lead to a um, increase in economic migration, which is in the detrimental of the Republic of Moldova and the EU. Therefore, this logic of uh, constructive ambiguity integrated in the uh, neighborhood policy could uh, could uh, be not as, produ as productive for certain countries, especially then when they have preconditions for political transformation, social and economic transformation. This also refers to Moldova. That is why it is very important for the government, for the pro-European government from Kishino, which I um, uh, lead, to obtain such a recognition as soon as possible, which will have to be um, uh, truly an inevitable event. We are waiting um, uh, um, uh, the ceremony to looking forward to the ceremony of signing uh, tomorrow uh, with the State Department the uh, compact uh, agreement with the MCC between the United States and Moldova, uh, um, um, and uh, with the facilitation of the MCC uh, in a um, value uh, valued at 262 million dollars. It's for the first time when my country benefits from a program of assistance um, uh, um, uh, uh, reimbursable uh, with a value and uh, an impact uh, so great. Um, concerning our new vision, uh, um, concerning the new vision of the corporation um, um, about the methods of identifying and achieving priorities for the compact program, I have the firm conviction that this constitute a guarantee of achieving the uh, proposed objective. In this sense, I would like to underline the attention paid to the interaction of the uh, uh, compact program with other programs of development, including on basis of other types of assistance uh, from the United States and um, the uh, whole community of development partners. We would like to build a, a united and solidary society in which every citizen participates uh, directly to the achievement of the uh, objectives of the government. The, the objective national priorities of the government um, are mainly the integration of the Republic of Moldova in the European uh, space of prosperity and security, reintegration of the country by identifying a viable and a lasting solution for the conflict from the eastern regions of Moldova, the Transnistrian region, ensuring the rule of law and uh, building a state of law, uh, overcoming the effects of the economic financial crisis and ensuring um, uh, la uh, 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 lasting uh, economic uh, growth, decentralizing power and ensuring local autonomy, eliminating consequences of the vertical of power pra practiced by the former government, and to apply principles and norms, European principles and norms, um, uh, in uh, uh, public administration. I would like to state with satisfaction that all the processes concerning the drafting and implementation of the compact program not only are in harmony with our aspiration, but also uh, will substantially contribute to their achievement. The compact program remains one of the uh, real tools that will help us to uh, escape from our um, um, hard past and to advance firmly towards a sure future. For our, us, this program is a, uh, um, 
is a connection between the priorities uh, of the government and the possibilities uh, to satisfy the needs of the citizens. Practically, this is uh, done through a process, a continuous process of consulting the public opinion. We have the duty to ensure the conditions, necessary conditions for incre increasing productivity, agricultural productivity, and to open new access to the markets and services by investments, important investments in the infrastructure, uh, in the system of irrigation and consolidating capa development capacity of the agricultural sector and uh, uh, public roads. At the same time, the Republic of Moldova will cooperate with the United States within the uh, agreement in order to achieve the objectives of this partnership. My country is engaged to do everything uh, as a um, sure quality and uh, valuable partner in order to increase investments in the private se sector. Thank you. Two questions uh, to both our guests today, uh, either to Johannes or to the Prime Minister. Who is first? Okay, you forced me to be first in that case. Um, let, let me ask you a question, uh, Vlad. It's clear that your commitment, Moldova's commitment, is to the European Union. How would you estimate the European <laughs> Union's commitment to Moldova? Uh, in particular, what is your view of this new Eastern uh, Partnership Program? Uh, is it sufficient at, at this time, or is something more necessary to boost Moldova in its aspirations towards integration? Of course, we expect much more than that. But it's a tool that the Republic of Moldova must fully use to its advantage. We are presently negotiating an associating association agreement with the European Union. And to this sense, the objective of the Republic of Moldova is to become a full-fledged member of the EU. At the same time, we understand that in order to achieve that status, we must be prepared. There is a period that we have to, to go through meaning deep reforms uh, inside the country. At the same time, before we reach that uh, goal, we have to ensure that our citizens benefit from as many values as uh, citizens in Europe. Uh, for example, freedom of travel to offer possibility to Moldovan companies to promote freely their products and services and capital um, in Europe, values that, that can be obtained uh, on the way to European integration. Our objective of European integration is not just a declaration, it is uh, uh, covered by concrete uh, actions and steps. Există, există oare sensul că uh, 
we have had different uh, sentiments in that period of time. Moldova at that time has undergone a dramatic period of time. But I want to assure you that Moldovan citizens got the support from the outside just enough for them to resist. And as we have seen, the Moldovan citizens uh, have resisted and offered a new perspective to the country by uh, uh, electing a democratic government. I would like to thank all of those who were with us in that difficult time. challenges uh, not uh, providing funding for the energy sector. I wanted to ask the Prime Minister what he's going to do to open up the uh, energy sector to uh, private investment. Could I, could I also ask you to give your name and affiliation, just so the Prime Minister knows? Uh, Tom Fergus, Commonwealth Energy Partners. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We would have wanted to solve all our problems uh, by means of this program. Although the issue of energy security is very important to us, the, its solution. Today, the first meeting in the morning that I had was dedicated to this issue particularly. So on the basis of the strategy, that we will adopt concerning energetic security in Moldova to offer the necessary conditions to attract investments and to ensure efficient management, internal management efficient, but also attracting for an investment. If you have the ability and willingness to participate to ensuring uh, Moldova's energy security, you're mostly welcome. Uh, just a quick follow-up question. I am Robert Krauss with Quadrex Energy International. I work closely with Commonwealth Energy Partners as well. <coughs> uh, also work with the Millennium Group in Moldova with Doreen Rashad. And we have been qualifying bioenergy projects for the last two and a half years. As you know, Moldova already has a blending law. It has a GSP plus agreement with the EU for the uh, duty-free import of ethanol there or export from Moldova. What do you think the government of Moldova can do today to encourage the further development of bioenergy and also municipal waste to energy? În primul rând, guvernul are în sarcină să asigure cadrul normativ. First of all, the government must ensure the legal framework for this initiatives to be of value. We have adopted a set of laws dealing with energy. By the end of 2009, we have managed to join the 
European uh, energetic uh, community, which opens a new, a clear perspective, including to the investors that want to invest with access to the European energy market. But what you mentioned about uh, renewable energy, this is this is a field that needs to be looked efficiently in Moldova because we do not have our own uh, energy resources. I'm uh, Jay McCransky. I'm the, uh, an investment banker here in Washington, D.C. that's financing projects in Moldova and Romania, but I'm also the head of the International Private Infrastructure Alliance and the Moldovan American Chamber of Commerce and the executive director of that. The, um, the question I have is that, uh, as you well know, the appetite for lending by major financial institutions in Moldova is uh, very small, if at all. Uh, in the current uh, economic environment for infrastructure projects in particular. And my question is, are there plans uh, in conjunction with the MCC or USAID or otherwise to uh, establish policies or programs for sovereign guarantees and uh, putting credibility behind those guarantees in order to uh, uh, enable foreign lending for infrastructure projects We hope very much that our development partners will have projects that will ensure the security of investments. But we have to recognize that the banking sector is a weak one in Moldova, and we want to attract investments in such a manner in order to have operators with sufficient resources to ensure the volume of financing for, for the projects in the, in the suggested time frame. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Christy Walton with Westwall Consultants. My question for you today is what immediate opportunities do you have in, from Moldova in regards to the private sector besides energy? First of all, we have to say the legal framework in Moldova creates the most attractive, regionally speaking, framework for investment. I, I refer to fiscal policy, to the conditions that ensure the investor. But it's important at this juncture in time to ensure most rapidly the stability and uh, the security of these investments. That the person that invests must be sure that those investments will be secure. Investments don't mean, doesn't mean just energy, of course. If we are to speak about priorities, we need investments in the infrastructure. I refer to roads, energy, social infrastructure, which would serve in this period of time, taking into account the crisis, as an engine for the um, uh, sustainable economic uh, uh, recovery and development. In the next, uh, in the immediate future, we will decide and we will launch actions in the uh, field of privatization. Our purpose being, first of all, attracting serious investors with technologies, but also with markets. Uh, for the companies that we own, that the state owns. In the nearest future, we will define the strategy to this end, and I 
spoke yesterday on these issues. Of course, it's important to have revenues to the budget, but we need investors with capa the capacity to attract other investors in the economy of Moldova. I'm a director of the Western NIS Fund and the Horizon Fund. We're private equity. We've been investing in Moldova for the last 14 years and had very good success with Mai Bank, Vitanta, and Brat Prater Navar. So my question is, uh, how do you see the private equity c companies like ours partnering or inv co-investing with the, uh, the challenge and um, also would it be possible to, as you privatize companies, I know you're privatizing companies in Moldova to participate in some of those, particularly in the agricultural sector. Agriculture is an important component of Moldovan economy. But here as well, we must ensure conditions uh, in what regulations are concerned. For example, a problem for uh, foreign investments is uh, the ability to purchase land. There are restrictions to this and liberalizing everything that deals with um, uh, commercializing agricultural products, demonopolize services in the transport area, and I mean the railroad monopolist uh, company in Moldova and ensure markets, and, and I don't only refer to the Eastern markets, but also Western markets, and we are in negotiation with the European Commission in order to ensure more access for our products to those markets. We have sufficient examples uh, presently of successful investments, including in the agricultural sector, we need to build on this momentum and develop this field. Please, gentlemen over here. David Baxter with Jacobs. Mr. Prime Minister, what have the impacts been of the secessionist movement in Dnistria, Transnistria, on the economic prospects of Moldova? The Transnistrian conflict is complicated, not only humanitarily, but has a direct uh, um, humanitarily and politically, but has a direct economic impact on Moldova. Taking into account the infrastructure that that was that was set up initially before the conflict in the Transnistrian area, all the industry was con concentrated there. And this system was um, uh, disbalanced at that time. And once we s identify a settlement to the Transnistrian conflict, we hope to improve uh, economic uh, potential. Let me follow up to that. I was going to ask you a question on Transnistria uh, as, a, as a political question. Um, to follow up what I said in my introduction is that one of the problems Moldova has faced is maintaining its territorial integrity. Do you think your government is more or less likely to find a solution vis-a-vis -vis Transnistria which will not hold back Moldova from your aspirations towards European integration, closer relations with the United States and so forth? On the contrary, I believe that the closer we get to Europe and the closer relationship we have with the United States, the closer we will get to a Transnistrian settlement because as a consequence we will have benefits for the citizens, liberties, rights and prosperity. This is the, the key and the solution to the country's reintegration. The better the people will live in the Republic of Moldova, the closer 
the reintegration uh, will be. Look at the, our current situation. Those from Transnistria have at least three passports. Sometimes there is a there is a competition between two countries who will issue more passports. For the Moldovan citizens, there is a problem in order to uh, travel in the European uh, uh, area. At the same time, we have about one million Moldovan citizens that uh, have uh, that are seeking a better life outside Moldova. There is a positive side of it. We have remittances that helped us to survive in this uh, period of time. But it's necessary to look more thoroughly at the situation and see that we have di uh, divided families and kids, uh, children outside the parental care. And in this communicate in the our dialogue with the European partners, my question is: If this rigid visa regime has really stopped the desire of Moldovans to get there, and then the question is: If the Republic of Moldova will have the benefit to freely move. Uh, uh, in this uh, space and to come back to their family whenever they need to. Would those from Transnistria want to benefit from that as well? This would be a concrete and direct uh, uh, step uh, towards the settlement of the issue. And there is a clear position that uh, we expect, uh, as far as direct subventioning that we witness right now for the so-called uh, Tiraspol administration, but we can talk for a long time about Transnistria. At the back, lady at the back. <coughs> Nadia McConnell, U.S. Ukraine Foundation. Uh, <clears throat> we, along with uh, our friends of Vlad Spahn with the Moldova Foundation and others, the Baltic Foundation, have created a uh, Baltic Black Caspian Seas Initiative. And our top two priorities are conflict areas like Transnistria and energy efficiency. <clears throat> and our niche is working at the municipal level uh, because we believe that the, presents the best opportunity for progress on all of these issues. Another area, and I, my question is whether this is part of the Millennium Challenge um, opportunities that you have outlined, is tourism. We have also identified tourism as a, a priority area. And one of our colleagues was in Japan last month because the Japanese are very interested in tourism and have a special program under their Guam uh, initiative. So my question is, is there anything within the Millennium Challenge program that would focus on tourism. We'll have good roads. <laughs> we'll facilitate tourism inclusively. But uh, on a serious note, we wish that more people would know about Moldova, would know the people in Moldova. And to this end, we have to work very hard to become known, to bring, to make, to make everyone aware of who we are, what we want, including those from Nebraska. because I was in Yash no, no. And, and trying to get back to Ukraine was a challenge. But uh, I just want to also tell you, we see that wine tourism has great potential for Moldova, Ukraine as no, well. As long as you don't drive at the same time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you want it? Uh, 
uh, the, on the roads that we have right now, you can uh, have tourism only if you drink a little. Uh, so we have to combine both. I wouldn't want that Moldova is viewed only uh, speaking from the point of uh, view of tourism. I don't want this to be reduced to wine. We have a lot of beautiful places. And we have what to display. And when we create that infrastructure, we want to ensure that people get there to see those things. It's a process that we we must manage very carefully in order to be successful. But that way, uh, particularly concerning your relations with Romania, I mean, do you <laughs> see Romania as a strong sponsor for your European integration process? And how do you, how do you see relations developing with uh, Bucharest? Uh, under your government, under your administration? And how would you like them to develop? We have excellent relations. We have natural relations between two countries that are neighbors, which have a common history, a common language. We consider that we can help each other reciprocally. But I would like to underline that we do not want to be more important or less important in achieving our European objective. The result of the European integration process will be decided by a joint effort of the EU member states. To this end, we want to have more friends in the European Union and I want to tell you, not without pride, that we have many friends which support us, and I hope that this support will uh, increase the speed of our integration. President Basesco of Romania is in Chisinau next week. We will discuss a number of issues that we have uh, outstanding in our bilateral relationship. And uh, the uh, current environment allows us uh, for these issues to be settled. Anxious. Am I going to ask about Russia? But I didn't. Know. And maybe one last question, if anybody has, please. Good afternoon. My name is Ken Stokes from the Institute for Innovation and Management in North Carolina. I'd like to know about the Black Sea relationships which are emerging. Thank you. We are participants of all regional uh, initiatives. We participate at all initiatives that in the Black Sea region, the, the Black Sea region bank. both the government uh, uh, side of it and also the parliamentary side. But we want to see some kind of results from this cooperation. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Economy says that we have access to the Black Sea, but we don't. We have access through the Danube. Prime Minister, thank you, Vlad, very much for coming. Uh, we hope that we at CSS can be helpful for you 
in achieving some of your aspirations. I mean, we don't have a lot of influence with the European Union, but maybe we can help you to develop closer relations with the United States in all dimensions. Thank you Thanks for coming and see you in Kishinev.